Hello and welcome. My name is Thomas Little. I'm a SQL Server DBA and I've been a DBA now for about 10 years. And today we're going to talk about how to set up an instance level audit in SQL Server 2008 R2. Auditing an instance of SQL Server database engine, engine or an individual database involves tracking and logging events that occur in the database engine. And SQL Server auditing lets you create the server audits, which can contain server audit specifications for server level events or database level events. And auditing events can be written to log files, or I'm sorry, the event log, or actual log files or audit files. Today we're going to talk about instance level events and how to set that up. We're going to go right into the demonstration here. First thing I do is I have Management Studio here, and in order to set up the audit, I'm going to I have connected to my 2008 instance. I'm going to expand security, and you're going to see this audit folder. First thing we're going to do is set that up. We're going to right click on it and hit New Audit. We have a number of options here to choose from, and the first option we're we're going to do is the audit name and we're going to audit DDLs on any schema on any database in this SQL Server engine or instance. Uh, so we're going to set up the audit name and call it DDL Audit. We're going to choose our destination. We have three options to choose from. One, we can do it to a file. We can do it to a the Windows security log or the Windows application log. And when you're writing to the Windows security log, it requires that the SQL Server service account to have grant security audit rights on the policy. By default, the local system and local service and the network service are part of this policy. So what that means is you need to make sure that if you're running SQL Server with a domain account or a account other than the local system, local service, or network service, you need to make sure that you go into your local policy and grant the domain account generate security audits. But for this demonstration, we're going to choose file. And we're going to write. We're going to write our audits to the to a file. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to choose the location. Now, for this demonstration, I've already set up a folder uh, in which to do the audits. Uh, it's this audit folder under the particular instance. And click OK. okay. Our next option is rollover. And if you're familiar with SQL Server Profiler, uh, these options should be a bit familiar to you. You can do maximum rollover files. In this case, uh, by default, it is unlimited, so it'll roll over um, until it stop until it wants to stop, or the engine is stopped and restarted. Uh, you also have maximum file size, so you can specify the s each size of your log files. For this demonstration, we're going to go ahead and limit our maximum file size to 10 meg. So we have that all set up, and we're going to click OK. And we're going to see here that it created our audit. And based upon the uh, icon, it's actually disabled by default. Okay. And that's good, and we're going to keep that there. Uh, we're next going to set up our server audit specification. And what this is going to do, it's actually going to tell SQL Server, what are we auditing? What am I writing to this audit file that you have set up? So the first thing we're going to do is create the name, call it DDL, audit, specs, and we're going to choose the DDL audit that we just created, and we're going to choose the action type. And here you have a number of different options to choose from. You can choose from uh, failed logons, so you can audit failed logons if you'd like. You can audit successful logons. Uh, again, for this demonstration, we're going to do DDL changes, um, and we're going to choose the change object sch or schema object change group, uh, and this is going to tell us any change on any object in any schema. We're going to choose that. Okay, we're going to go ahead and click OK. 
Now we're going to enable it. And when we enable it, we right click on, first we right click on the audits, or the actual audit, and we enable that. And what this will do is actually create that file. You'll see here, uh, let's delete this one because this is from a previous setup. Okay. You'll see here it actually create, created this particular audit uh, for us. Okay. So now we're going to audit, we're going to enable our specification. Okay. Right click on it, you'll see enable audit specification. And now what's happening is the engine is tracking all the DDL changes that are happening within the, C within the SQL Server instance. So for the demonstration, we're actually going to do a change to the AdventureWorks database. We're going to create this table called TBL Test Audit Change. Uh, we're going to wait, make a delay or do a wait delay of three seconds. And then we're going to use this function called FN Get Audit File. And what you can do uh, with this particular function is specify an audit file or a group of audit files uh, by using the star here. Uh, you can specify them and create a tabular result set uh, that you can view. So you can wrap this in a stored procedure if you'd like to do something like that. Okay, So we're going to go ahead and execute this. Okay. And what you'll see here, now this error message I already created this table in, in a statement uh, it should have been dropped but you'll still be able to see the actual record that was created okay. so you'll see here if we scroll over all the way over you can see the actual statement that was executed you'll be able to see the object name and the database name here uh, and be able to get some information that you can use to track changes if I went through, let's do that. Let's go through our AdventureWorks database and let's create the, let's delete this. And let's run through this one more time. And while I'm executing it, it's now creating that. And you can see here, we have another audit action, DR. So this is when I actually deleted it and when I created it. scroll over we can see that a drop table was done we can see that it was created again by our procedure you'll see the object name what data uh, the schema and what database it was done and what workstation it was done by so this is great you can also use the object explorer to see the same information if you go over into the audit you right click on it you'll see view audit logs and you'll be able to see that same information in here. You can see that we create, we dropped it, created it. Okay. If we scroll over, we can see the actual SQL statement that was executed uh, for this DDL change. Well, my name's Thomas Little. Uh, if you have any questions, you can always email me at tlittle30 at gmail.com or you can visit my website at www.thomaslittle.com. Thank you.